Uh, okay, thank you. Thank you, Marco. Good afternoon, uh, uh, everyone. So uh, I hope uh, everyone is uh, listening uh, in perfect conditions. So, uh, as Marco said, and uh, uh, as you can see in this slide, the weather briefing will be presented by me and my colleague, Nunu Muraira. So, uh, I always uh, like to know where you are watching this session from. So, please use the mark or arrow on the map. So, use the, um, the drawing toolbar on the left side. So, I need to... Uh, uh, I I think you can you can uh, uh, annotate now. Yeah, thank you. So uh, yes, so I will talk uh, about the current weather situation, and uh, my colleague uh, will talk about some uh, past events. Um, Okay, uh, perfect. So, participants uh, all over uh, Europe, but mostly uh, the western part of uh, Europe. Okay, so so let's so let's move on. Uh, so we start with the meteor alarm um, information for today, and we can see that there are some still uh, large areas over Europe with severe to moderate awareness level. They are mainly uh, for wind, uh, but also for snow, for coastal events, um, for some uh, rain also and some thunderstorm uh, um, warnings are expected uh, so in areas like Italy and Greece. However, uh, so this is uh, less severe than the days uh, before uh, when we have quite a few uh, named storms. So uh, let's start with the upper levels and the water vapor uh, 6.2 and uh, when you look at this image, uh, where are the areas that might need uh, more attention or some features? I will, so I think you can start annotating. Uh, where do you think uh, there are some areas uh, that some features or areas that you might uh, want to uh, they need more attention, you need to think more, you need to, to have more data. Uh, where do you think? Um, just a guess, you don't, have, you don't have more information, so it's only water vapor. So where do you think? Okay, yeah, it's, it's a guess, but it's a very good guess. Yeah, perfect. Yeah, I think so. I, I agree with you. It's the it's very good guess. Okay, um, so let's move on uh, with the same image, but with the help of the ECM uh, ECMWF model. So we have here uh, the wind and the geopotential at 300 hectopascal, and it seems that the, 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 the jet stream is pushing the storms further north. So we'll have some, some uh, um, storms uh, near Iceland. So they are uh, pushing, going further north. But uh, the polar jet is still, is still intense, uh, as you can see, and, uh, but it's more wavy. The, the, the wave has amplified. So we we have also the 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 this trough over here that is um uh, over east part it is very deep and will develop a cutoff that will affect uh, eastern mediterranean we uh, also have the the subtropical jet 
over this area, the subtrop that is crossing northern Africa towards east and is passing uh, nearby uh, this cutoff flow uh, near Madeira and Canary Islands. This cutoff flow uh, is along with this high pressure system. Um, is this, this both both systems they they look like uh, a Rex block pattern, but uh, it seems that this pattern won't last long. So the cutoff will stay here and uh, will stay here, but the the high pressure system will move uh, over this area over here. So uh, it, it will m move towards uh, Africa. So we have here some. Uh, areas of, of interest that will bring some convective, um, convective uh, weather uh, later, uh, next hours and next days. Now uh, let's uh, uh, add some uh, more information. So we have this uh, air mass RGB, which it's a very good uh, uh, RGB to help analyze dynamic processes. So we can check the, the warm hair and the cold hair. You, you know already the warm hair, it's the greenish area. The cold hair is the, the, the bluish area. And uh, we also have the, the, the dry air masses. And the drier masses can, can indicate um, uh, important features like PV anomalies, like the position of the jet streams or uh, dry intrusions. So, so these, these are important features that uh, can co uh, it's, um, we can add information to the water vapor that we saw previous. So uh, at 6 UTC, this image uh, with the mean sea level pressure, we, we can have a better picture. Where are the areas that might need more attention? So we saw, and you, you uh, mark the, 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 the low pressure system, and uh, we can have, again, this pressure system and this pressure system. And also, we can have, we have the frontal system over UK that is moving very fast and uh, is, is going to affect uh, at this time, it's going to affect this, this area. And also we have uh, this pressure system over uh, the Baltic countries. And again, uh, someone uh, marked this area. Yes, there is some uh, brownish color here may indicate some uh, PV anomaly, some cyclogenesis. Yeah, this is this is an uh, area that we should uh, pay attention. But there is another area that, uh, or two areas, I think that uh, we we have to have a better uh, a better picture of what it means, what it's going to happen, what are the ingredients, and these are the areas. These they are moving fast under the, 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 the influence of the, the jet stream, uh, maybe some frontogenesis, some cyclogenesis, we don't know, but these are areas that also uh, we need uh, to pay attention for. Okay, and there is something missing, it's the, the surface. Uh, so at least to see some, some uh, uh, low level cloudiness. So we have both uh, at 6 UTC, uh, I need both uh, uh, R RGB. So I have the night microphysics and the co uh, natural color RGB. So we can have um, a, a better picture what uh, the, the, the features near the surface. And uh, what is important here is the, the, again, this area and this area. And of course, these red colors are thick ice clouds. So they are uh, associated to the frontal system and uh, the, the convective areas uh, south of Iceland. And uh, over the area, Europe, uh, over France, the German, the Central Europe, we have some low level cloudiness mainly, but also some mid level. And uh, some, some areas they are thick. 
thick uh, uh, cloudiness. And of course, Iberia, clear skies, and we have um, a severe drought uh, uh, in our country and, and our neighbor, uh, Spain. And of course, uh, from the natural color IG, RGB, so we can see very well the low pressure system over the Baltic countries and also the, the, the system uh, over here, Italy and Greece with some convective cloudiness. And uh, again, uh, it's possible to see some um, snow on the ground. Of course, we can, can have here, and uh, again here we can have uh, we can see some some snow on the on the ground which is important and uh, with so many so many cloudiness so uh, this this area with so many cloudiness it's are it's hard to to see if we have some some places with uh, fog uh, but uh, over the northern part we may have some some uh, low level or fog cloudiness Okay, so finally, uh, with uh, so many, so many storms and so many um, low level systems over the Atlantic, we uh, had some coastal events and we are going to continue to, ha uh, to have uh, high waves events. Uh, they affect mainly uh, Western Europe in the next few days. So this is the forecast, uh, the, the first one is the forecast for today and this is the forecast for the 24th for thursday so you can see that affects mainly uh this area here uh the western part with high waves and uh on the 24th we can see some some waves that can reach 10 to 12 uh, meters so uh that's uh everything thank you that's all from my side for the current weather situation uh, so nunu you can uh, continue thank you so much for your attention okay thank you angela uh, so i'm next i'm going to share with you on my screen i hope i can do it properly okay so um so I will continue now, um, and um, I will talk about the past, uh, the past week mainly. Um, and um, I will start with some warnings also, but on the 18th of February. So uh, warnings at Europe that uh, at ATTC, uh, it could, it could have, it could, you could see it if you went to Mutual Alarm, for instance, you could see all these red warnings. Uh, you all know, of course, what I'm talking about. Um, red warnings for wind in Ireland, UK, the Netherlands, Denmark, and Germany at that at this time, but there were a lot of warnings in in many countries. Um, so what I ask now is um, if you now try to 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 give me what was the name uh, used uh, in your country for the storm that hit Europe last week. So we are, I'm talking about uh, mainly Friday, um, moving into into Saturday, but mainly Friday on the 18th. So Please go ahead and make a tick or something. Uh, how do you knew this storm? What was the name? Go ahead. Okay. Scary one. Okay. So I guess everyone knew it as Eunice. Okay, uh, okay, very well. Um, I will just clear now and move. Yeah, that's the, um, the, 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 I will now stop sharing. And uh, yeah, that's, that was Storm Eunice. So this is an image from the 18th of February at Zero UTC, an air mass RGB that uh, my colleague Angel already explained before. Uh, this is, I think, one of the most prominent images of this storm. Um, so um, those are the two names that I that I uh, mentioned before were also names that were used, but uh, Eunice was the one um, uh, defined according to, to the storm naming group uh, from the, the west part. And, and now I will show you 
the evolution on the on the day before, on on Thursday the seventeenth. This is a uh, six hour images uh, from zero six twelve and eighteen on 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 the seventeenth of February, where where you can see the evolution of the storm. I think well here is the at at six UTC you can already see here the the cloud had developing. And uh, you had the, the start of the rapid cyclogenesis part. So we had already minus al already al almost minus nine hectopascal in six hours, which is more than one hectopascal per hour. So that was the beginning, let's say, um, of this rapid cyclogenesis process. And then here at 18, um, it was when we had the highest uh, six hour pressure drop. So almost minus 16 hectopascal in six hours, which is, uh, well, very close to three hectopascal per hour. Uh, in the next day, on the 18th, you can see already the, the storm developing very well, uh, approaching Ireland and UK. Uh, so at zero UTC here, this is at six, and then 12 and 18, it moved to the North Sea, and then afterwards to the Baltic. Uh, but the, one of the main, main Issues that I would like to 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 mention is that at this time, at 18 18 February at zero UTC, we had the highest 24 hour pressure drop. So we had almost 44 hectopascal drop in 24 hours, which is uh, I would say pretty much. Uh, however, the, the 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 at six UTC was in fact uh, when we could have uh, the highest mean wind speed over the ocean. And this is according to ECMWF uh, analysis. So we had 67 here uh, knots, which is already hurricane force, um, not a hurricane, of course, uh, just hurricane force. Um, and this is, was the time that we, we, we had in the analysis uh, this information. But of course, you know, uh, the European Center analysis, it's, 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 uh, it's based on many things, but um, how about uh, observations? Um, just by, 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 by satellite. So we have, to, so that's why I want to ask you now, if you again, let me give you a possibility to annotate again. Uh, let's see. Oh, okay. I think you can. Just let me know how many scatterometers, which are the, the, the sensors that enable us to, to see uh, wind at the surface in the, over the ocean. How many scatterometers do you think were available last week to observe? Unit storm. Okay, I can see a lot of possibilities. From one to six, maybe. If I... Okay. Well, I will show you the ones I could find. <laughs> so. I'm not sure. Let me know if, if there are more than what I meant. I will mention. Okay. I will have to start to stop now. Just let me just stop the annotation now. Well, clear first, and then stop, and then I move. Well, I, I will I will use information from five. It's the two ASCATs uh, from Emetsat, the CFO SAT, and the 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 the, the, the scatterometers from from China, two of them. So I will use information from five, um, and I will start with using the, the information for for the ones that uh, um, OZSAF is 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 is, is showing. Uh, uh, for these these are the ones that uh, exist in the in the OZSAF, of course. And so um, I will show you now the superposition of the RGB, the air mass RGB, uh, uh, with uh, one of one pass from ASCAT C wind. I like this this superposition very much because, uh, as Angela was mentioning, we have information from the upper levels, well, medium and upper uh, parts of the troposphere from the air mass RGB. Uh, you have the, the two water vapor channels there, the 6.2 and the 7.3. So uh, we we have also then the the surface observation from from ASCAT. So we really have information in many levels of, of the troposphere and. Um, it's really an observation uh, just uh, for all these levels. So I, I would I like to see it as a, a 3D view 
uh, of this mechanism. And, and you can see clear here, clearly here the, the a sting jet pattern. So this the cloud head and this sting, this uh, shape of a sting here, uh, which uh, it's, it's known to be related to very high winds. And in fact, you can see here this, I don't know if you, if you managed to do it, but you see some red uh, arrows here which correspond to the highest uh, surface wind speed, okay? And you see that the maxima is here. Of course, you see less or less intense winds to the north quadrants and more intense in the southern quadrants. But you can, in the, in the tip of the, of the sting, you, you, ASCAT really shows you independently <laughs> that you have uh, some local maxima. Uh, if you don't like to see many colors uh, all together, because it can be some confusing because of a lot of reds, uh, because here you have the, the, the reddish tones from the dry intrusion of stratospheric air here in this, in this reddish uh, color in the RGB, and you also have some, some reddish and, and orange uh, colors from, from, the, from the ASCAT. You can, for instance, overload, uh, overlay it with the, with the, with the simple uh, water vapor uh, image. And uh, you can see clearly that uh, you have the now in wind barbs the 24, 25 knots uh, information on this on here and on here. And um, basically, uh, this is Beaufort 10 or, or more, which is usually the last class of, in, of wind intensity that's usually plotted for scattermeters. I just show you here usually. Um, where if you, if you find in many places the, the limits that are used, so 50 knots, you know, here more than, than before nine, which is before uh, 10. And this is usually close to the limit uh, where, 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 where discrimination is, is, is possible. This is a, a path on the end of, of Thursday, the 17th, so at 22. Uh, a very nice path is also the one from, from the the Chinese scattermeter, the high yang. Um, this this pass is for already from the 18, uh, very close to Ireland already. The 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 the, the system uh, at six in the morning, and uh, you can see already here uh, information on 60 knots. So already a little bit uh, over the the, the 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 values that we mentioned before, and uh, from the European Centre analysis at this time, uh, we had uh, move for 12 already with 67 knots. Uh, so, um, of course, the ASCAT was not really there on these on these values, but um, but I think it it gave us a very very good uh, information uh, about the, the how, how strong the winds were, very close to to shore. So, in 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 case of uh, of Ireland, uh, another pass. It's later on on Friday, so uh, at at the middle middle of the day. Uh, you had already some strong winds approaching uh, UK here. You can see uh, the, also these reddish uh, arrows here. Uh, here the range is not so high; it's uh, 40 to 50 knot mean winds, which is which, which is both for nine. Uh, but uh, we we know from the UK uh, Met Office information that there was a report. On the on the 18th of August, that reached 196 kilometers per hour uh, in in the Isle of Wight. So the, the according to UK, shall be the highest or the record uh, for 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 uh, for a gust, uh, a wind gust. So uh, now moving a little bit and thinking about waves, uh, my. Angela also talking about the, the, the wave forecast for the next uh, days, but how about the waves for this for this situation? Um, I'm showing you now the, the Sentinel 3B significant wave height. Um, of course, we know that the, the passes are uh, well just over uh, in the sub sub satellite point. Uh, that the information is available, so it's not a big swath like the for the for the scattermeter, the altimeter. This was, is of course, very narrow. Then um, here it's information from OceanDataLab.com that you can also get it easily. Um, the maximum that we get is to eight meters, but you can see here uh, this this pass uh, shows you that eight meters are very close to to shore. In fact, it was eight to eleven meters here, 
uh, but it's a large area to the south of Ireland where, where these wave sites uh, were, were uh, observed. And this was, in fact, in the middle of the day on, on, on last Friday, the 18th. Uh, one thing that I would like to, to, to show you also is um, that these waves uh, in, on the 19th, the, 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 some waves also um, reached lower latitudes. So we had some waves in Portugal, not as high. Uh, we got some five to seven meters uh, over a pass here uh, on, on, the, on the early morning on the, on the 19th, uh, so already on Saturday. Uh, and we had some orange warnings uh, that were, were issued for, for this purpose, uh, but so not, not that high, but and, uh, that's one of the kind, the kind of waves that we had, and that's uh, our internal system at IPMA that we use it for, for, for tracking this, these, these waves. Uh, of course, I'm now going to show you three images from three uh, consecutive days, so from the 17th, from the 18th and the 19th, uh, and, and you can see the wave height in the Atlantic uh, with the uh, with significant high from six satellites that are described here, and you can see, of course, uh, the higher uh, uh, higher waves in the middle of the Atlantic on the on the 17th. That was when when Eunice was still developing, and you can see the difference on the 18th and this this is the same pass I showed before, where you can see that these high waves uh, approach again the uh, approach approach the, the the let's say the land. And you see on the next day, on the 19th, so lower waves already here, but still in the Atlantic, you have, as usual, and you, if you look at this, uh, of the wave maps in terms of core forecast, you, you, you also all the time see this, that these waves uh, are really high in the middle of the Atlantic. The problem is when they are uh, getting closer to, to land over UK, Ireland, also here in Iberia, we got it a lot. Um, so uh, this is a nice way to to see this uh, this way this uh, this pattern of, of waves uh, over the over the Atlantic. So just to to finish, um, just let you know about the, some 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 links. Uh, I'm I'm showing you uh, if you want to know more about Storm Eunice, you can check the the showcase that Umetsat has also started to do. Uh, if you want to know about the Sting Jet. You can check this uh, this resource on Emitrain uh, website um, about cyclogenesis. And if you want to know um, more about, for instance, uh, Cynthia, that's a storm that also affected many countries in Europe 12 years ago. Uh, and it, there was all, there is also a view on the, uh, by the ASCAT in different areas of the of the of the ocean in the Atlantic, in the North Sea, and the Baltic Sea. You can also see this resource from Emitrain. Uh, also, uh, just to let you know that. Um, uh, if you want to know more about hurricane force winds in exotropical uh, storms in North Atlantic, you can check this this link that was prepared by the Ocean Prediction Center from NOAA. Uh, this is a heat map uh, for a special season, 2019-2020, uh, hurricane force winds from exotropical. Uh, and this is the distribution. You see that uh, UK and Ireland, they have a little bit of a blue there. Um, so, but uh, the main, of course, the, the main frequency is in the middle of the Atlantic. And here in, on, the, on the right, you can see uh, a 15 year sequence uh, where you can see the, 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 the frequency of these events throughout the year on these 15 seasons. You can see February, for instance, of course, you know, <clears throat> December to February, where you have more events. So this event, uh, it's not a unique one. Uh, this is one from Unis, uh, it's, uh, but it's, it's of, of course a rare event. Um, and the, what makes it more important, of course, it's the, it's a situation that uh, had this impact because it, there were there were even casualties because of Unis, of course, um, overland in many countries. Uh, so uh, just to let you know that, for instance, um, you can use uh, the, the scatter meter, for instance, for checking also uh, tropical cyclones. Uh, and Batsirai was one of them in, Mad in Madagascar. Madagascar is already being uh, affected by M. Nati now, so another one uh, in less than two weeks. Uh, but uh, th these were nice images that uh, were able to were able to be seen uh, for 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 Batsirai uh, tropical cyclone over also with the with scatter meter. Also in here it's the Ayang, uh, the Chinese one, and here is the the Ascat. 
and you can see it, it around with the with the eye feature there. Also, this is in a in the, in a showcase from Emetsate that you can check on, on this link. And uh, just to finish, um, just to let you know that uh, of course, the atmosphere is not only only about wind and precipitation and and this kind of extreme events on this side of the atmospheric spectrum, let's say. Uh, we also had the dust event, which is more linked to the to the drought situation that uh, Angela also also mentioned before. Um, uh, we can we can see it here in the in, from the for the 29th and 30th of January, um, the end of last month. You can see an event here where you we can really easily see in magenta colors the the dust in in, in the atmosphere. It's mixed with with some cloudiness, which appears in in these reddish and orange tones. But in between, you can see very well the the magenta uh, shades. Uh, coming from North Africa, reaching Madeira, reaching the, the Canary Islands. Uh, and this is, of course, from the infrared uh, channels from MSG. But in, on the right, you can see the combination with the infrared and the high resolution visible in, the, uh, in this cloud RGB. And in here, uh, the, 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 the dust is in these yellowish uh, tones here over Madeira, and you can see it also over the Canary Islands. So um, that, that's all from, from my side, uh, and, uh, uh, and I, I thank you. Uh, from our side, Angela and mine, uh, and to just let you know that uh, today, or not today, but uh, this uh, one, one week ago or something, on the February, uh, 14th of February, uh, there were 25th. Uh, that was 25th anniversary of the Metsat uh, network. Uh, so uh, congratulations for these 25 years, and that's just a note, the final note that uh, I, uh, that I have for you.